I invite all of you to put your hands together with me and let's give God the praise that he deserves. We are here to praise him. We are here to worship him. I am Ralph Irving. I am pastor of Greater Leonard Missionary Baptist Church located in historic Old North St. Louis. We have gathered today that we might worship our God in spirit and in truth, that we might worship our God in the splendor of holiness. Our devotional reading, lifted from the eighth Psalm in its entirety from the King James Version of God's Holy Word. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and has crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beast of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, in the matchless and marvelous name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we bow. We love you, Lord, with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. We are thankful unto you for our daily bread. We are thankful, Father, for our salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord and the preservation of the same by your Holy Spirit. Father, we are here that we might worship you. And Father, I pray that you will accept our worship and accept us in worship. Oh, Heavenly Father, bless this our time here together today. We ask and say in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Greater Leonard, this day, remember the personal sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the sacrifice, sacrifice that he made for our salvation. Remember his body, remember his blood so that you'll remember his redemptive suffering until he returns. This is the first Sunday of the month, and every first Sunday of the month, we should be mindful of him, if not in the physical doing of the celebration of his sacrificial death and suffering, but certainly in remembrance of the same. So let us remember the blood and the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Also, we want you to remember Sister Willie Watkins when you're in your prayers, uh, for she had been hospitalized but is now, has now returned home and is doing well. We want you to continue praying for Sister Deborah Hamer, Sister Pat Polk, and Sister Teresita Clinton. Keep them and those families lifted up in your prayers as you are mindful. We want you to remain steady, church, in this unsteady time that we're in, for certainly you know that these things are unpredictable and we don't know quite what's at hand. But if we keep our hands in the master's hand, we'll know that everything will be all right. Along with that, and as we conclude these comments, we want you to please, sir, please, ma'am, get out and vote. If you have not already done that, please do that. Let go out and, and vote your convictions and cast your ballot. Uh, 
ballot for, for the candidate of your choice, that you might have a voice in the things that happens in this nation that you are a citizen of. So please, please vote. Having said those things, I invite you again to pray. Bow with me. And in humble submission unto the Lord, let us earnestly petition him today. As I do aloud, we ask that you'll do that where you are, as you will. Father in heaven, what a wonderful day that you have blessed us to see. There is a certain spiritual euphoria, the movement, if you will, of your Holy Spirit that has overcome us. And Father, we are glad. We are filled with joy. We thank you. We love you. We adore you. We lift you up. Father, hear this your servant's prayer on behalf of all your people. We are thankful for life and the health and strength of life. We are thankful for our salvation. We are thankful for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For by him, we are saved. We're thankful for your Holy Spirit who leads and guides us along our Christian journeys. Lord, hear this, your servant's prayer. Father, we ask your blessings upon those who have been inflicted and in, infected by this virus. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we ask that you will see about them as you will. For when your will is done, our best interests are being served. Father, bless the world as we're in this unprecedented time with the calamity and chaos, the unrest that's everywhere. We ask for your peace. We ask for your grace. We ask for your mercy upon us all. Bless this nation in which we live. Lord God, I pray that you cause a sense of order. For we know that you're not the God of confusion, but you are the God of order. Lord, hear this prayer. Father, bless those who are grieving. Lord God, they desire your comfort, your consolation, and certainly the closure that you give. Father, bless them now. Visit them now. It is our desire in Jesus' name. Hear this prayer. Father, help this church to be a beacon light in this dark situation. Lord, have us to minister to the needs of this community. Not only the church community, but the community in which the church is planted. Lord, hear this, your servant's prayer. Father, there needs to be a dispelling of the, the biases and the bigotry 
that's going about this, this country, let love abide. Lord, let us love one another despite our backgrounds. Lord, let us pray for one another despite our backgrounds. Father, hear this, your servant's prayer. Allow us to know, Father, that we're not one another's enemies, but we have a common enemy who is the devil, our adversary. He influences us to do the wrong thing and to be at odds with one another. Father, let us not think on those things that disrupt and divide and disturb us, but think on those things that are lovely. Think on those things that are pure. Let us find our places in your word that we might think the right thing, speak the right things, and do the right things. Lord, hear this, your servant's prayer. O oh Lord, our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Dear Father, bless us now and bless us forever. Bless the tithe, the offering, and the pledges, and bless all those who did attend to it according to the promises of your word. And we'll be careful to always, always give you the praise. Father, there are those who have suffered unemployment because of this virus, but we know that you are an equal opportunity employer, but all things belong to you. And Father, we know that you have exactly what we need. Father, there are those who are experiencing anxiety and depression because of our being away from one another for such an extended period of time. Father, lend us your, your comfort and your ease right now. Lord, that we might realize that we're not alone, that you're always with us, and you're always with us to deliver us, even from our anxieties and depression. Lord, hear this prayer. We pray for your intercession within the ranks of humanity. Lord, that we might find ourselves embracing one another with prayer and in prayer. Hear this prayer. Thank you, Father. Bless the music ministry today that they in their ministry will exalt you and inspire your people. Father, hear this prayer. Thank you, Father. Thank you so very much for all things. For you make all things work together for the good, for those who love you, for those who are the called according to your purpose. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, and for his very sake, amen. And now our song of inspiration.
precious Lamb of God, because of your grace I can finish this race, the precious Lamb of God, even when I broke, broke your heart, my sin tore of God's grace, we can all finish this race. We can press on to see what our end will be. Praise the name of the Lord. We thank him for his lamb, the precious lamb of God. 
Pray with me again. Dear Father, we've come to this portion of the service that's pleasingly punctuated with preaching. And we ask, O oh, Heavenly Father, that you will speak a word into this atmosphere, that you'll speak a word into our lives, that you'll speak a word into our, into our hearts. We need to hear from you, Father. We need a word to guide us, a word to lead us, a word to focus us. So I pray, O oh Heavenly Father, bless us with your word today. Take me and use me as an instrument of your will. And I pray that the words of my mouth, as well as the meditations of my heart, be found acceptable in thy sight, my Lord, my strength, my Redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Our sermon text for today is lifted from the third chapter of Paul's epistle to the Philippians, Philippians 3, beginning to read at the 13th verse and through the 15th, and it reads in this manner. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded, and if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. With emphasis on that 14th verse, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. The title to this message this morning is simply, Press on, press on. We're living in a time where we need to press on. We have been away from the brick and the mortar and our fellowship with one another for most of this year. And sometimes we can become a little disenchanted. We can become a little faithless when it comes to following Christ. And I'm here to encourage somebody that we need to press on. Paul wrote to the church at Philippi, among other things, to press on despite the clamor and chaos of the Judaizers there, particularly in this third and fourth chapters. And he encourages them to press on despite of these negative things. And certainly, this season of this virus is a negative thing. And we need to learn how to Press on. Just keep on keeping on. Whether we're at the brick and mortar or we are virtual, we need to learn how to press on. In this awful and awkward time of restrictions, lockdowns, quarantines, social distancing, working from home, virtual services and virtual classrooms and church closings, the once active and alert churchgoer can find himself, can find herself 
lapsing into spiritual apathy, having a lack of interest in spiritual things, lapsing into spiritual complacency, self-satisfied with one's spiritual attainment and an unawareness of one's spiritual deficiencies, and a lapsing into spiritual lethargy, being indifferent and sluggish about those spiritual, about one's spiritual condition and position. In other words, your once fit faith has become or is becoming a bit flabby. You know how it is when you used to work out and you were toned and you were fit, and then when you find yourself not being uh, so active with your remaining fit, what used to be muscle has turned to flab. I want to suggest that with your faith, that once used to, what once used to be a muscle in your faith has turned to flab because we've been away too long and you don't have your, you don't have your personal trainer, your pastor to be with you to help you continue to be fit in the faith of Jesus Christ. And I'm here to tell you, I'm here to encourage you, press on. Brothers and sisters, in this awful and awkward time, I propose to you this morning, you must consistently and constantly do all you can to be all you can to attain heaven. There's a view that we ought to all have. There is a perspective that we ought to all have. And Paul had that perspective. Paul had that view. He always had heaven on his mind. Just because you don't come to the brick and mortar, just because you cannot fellowship with one another just for a little while, it does not mean that you ought to forsake and forget about doing those things that keeps you fit in your faith. You need to keep heaven in your view. When we are working to be spiritually fit, our goal should always be heaven. And your faith being so focused on heaven that you can actually do some earthly good. You know how that old adage is, that you're so heavenly minded, you can, you're no earthly good. But I want to suggest that you can be so heavenly minded that it, that's when you'll be some earthly good. That's when you're able to do some earthly good. When you keep your view, when you keep your mind on heaven, the goal of pressing on. Verse 14, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. The goal of pressing on. Brothers and sisters, the primary purpose the Paul the Apostle Paul wrote this letter to the church in Philippi was to graciously thank them. That's what he really was writing about initially and primarily for their gifts of support while he was imprisoned in Rome. Can you imagine somebody being thankful to somebody else while they're being locked down and under arrest? And yet Paul had that kind of mindset. Paul had his mind on heaven. And so having his mind on heaven, he also had his mind on that church that he planted in Philippi. Hallelujah, somebody. Paul said that he had even been exalted even to the third heaven. Paul said he was inundated by revelation from God. Paul had a view of heaven. And so he writes this letter to, to thank his brothers and sisters, that beloved church in, in Philippi, to thank them for the gifts, for remembering him while he was in bonds. Brothers and sisters, despite his situation of distance and imprisonment with his obvious burdens, Paul pressed on in his purpose to nurture the church. He, by the grace of God, that, that he, by the grace of God, planted in the city of Philippi. Paul didn't forget. Paul didn't neglect. Paul kept on doing what Paul was to do despite his being locked down, despite his not being able to be with them, despite of where he was and the condition that he was in. Paul had a mind to thank them. Paul had a mind to encourage them. Paul had a mind to lift them up all because he had a view of heaven. 
in this current situation of social distancing and shutdowns, our God expects us to press on as his church and press on through our shutdown, press on through our distancing, press on with our virtual services, press on through our personal pain and panic of this pandemic, knowing that every passing day puts us just a little bit closer to our eternal home of heaven. Have you ever considered that? That this home, this earth is not our home, but we have a home. We have another place. We have a building that's not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Yes, Jesus went away to prepare a place for us that where he is, one day we shall be also. We ought to have a view of heaven. And when you have a true view of heaven, you will keep on pressing on despite what you're going through, despite what's happening to us, you'll press on. Paul impressed upon the beloved saints at Philippi. His personal purpose for pressing was to reach the mark, the goal of heaven. That's our goal. We want to keep on keeping on that we might reach our goal, that we will get to heaven. All that we're doing now is leading us to heaven. All that we're doing now is preparing us for heaven. Just keep on keeping on. It keeps you in right relationship with the Lord or right fellowship with him. We want you to keep on pressing in all that you do in his name. Not pressing, not working to be saved, but pressing or working because he was saved. We don't press to be saved. We press because we are saved. Every good Christian keeps heaven in view. Forgetting what is behind and straining or stretching toward what is ahead while serving strenuously in your now. Paul says that he, he forgets about those things in his past and he's reaching toward that thing in his future. He's neither in his past anymore and neither is he in his future. He is in his now and in his now. He's going to press. It is now he's going to stretch. It is now he's going to strain. It's just like a runner in a race when he's straining every muscle in his or her body to reach the finish line. The finish line, the goal for us is to get to heaven. And all of us are to run with all of our might. The closer we get, the harder we ought to run. The closer we get, the harder we ought to press. Run! like your heart is going to beat out of your chest. And when you get to that, that finish line, when you stumble, if you will, across that finish line, Jesus will be there to catch you and welcome you home. Every good Christian keeps heaven in view, forgetting what is behind and straining, stretching toward what is ahead while serving strenuously in your now, knowing that heaven is more than worth the work that we put out. The work that we put out is the work that we ought to put out, but we're nothing but unprofitable servant. We don't make a profit when we work for God because it's what we ought to do. It's what we were called to do. And we need to know that heaven is worth more than the work we do. Making it to heaven and into heaven, we do so by and in and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The goal of pressing on. And also the, the pattern of pressing on. The pattern of pressing on. In verse 15 it tells us, Let us therefore as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you pattern of pressing on. Let us therefore as many as be perfect or mature be thus minded. We ought to have a shared mindset. That shared mindset ought to be having a perspective of heaven in mind. 
If we don't have anything else, we ought to all have that. It's a shared perspective. We're all trying to get to heaven. We're not trying to get to heaven upon our merit, but the merit of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for what he has already done. And if we keep our hand in his hand, if we continue, as Paul says, press or follow after him, we'll get there one of these old days. And if you truly have been born again, you're going to keep on following him. You have help to keep Jesus in mind. You have help to keep heaven in your view. He is the Holy Spirit. I tell you here this morning, church, there's a pattern of pressing on. The Apostle Paul proposed to those saints in Philippi that all who were perfect, that is, all who were mature, would have the same view. There ought to be a pattern when I'm talking to you that I can hear you having a view of heaven in your mind. I ought to hear when I am talking to you that you're waiting to get and running to get to your home. Are you listening to me? We ought to have the same view, the view of heaven, the Christian's reward, the Christian's rest, the Christian's real residence. There's a, ro a reward that we all have and it is heaven. Too often we look to have a pat on our back while we're here. But I tell you, the pat that you're looking for is waiting for you in heaven. It is the Christian's reward. You need to have a rest for when you're running, your legs get tired. When you're running, your arms get tired. When you're running, you feel like you're out of breath. When you're running, your heart is pumping and pumping and pumping, and you need a rest. When you're spiritually running and you're running this spiritual race, you're going to get tired sometimes. But I tell you, there is a rest that is reserved for the people of God. Yes, it is, and it is in heaven. The Christian's real residence. This earth is not our home. Heaven ought to be in our view. The pattern of pressing on for the mature contemporary Christian, despite the heaviness of current restrictions and virtual services, we ought to collectively think about getting to heaven. Wherever you are in the comfort of your home, wherever you are doing whatever you're doing, walking for exercise, doing all the things that you're doing, you ought to have heaven on your mind. We ought to all have heaven on our mind. Heaven where we'll never grow old. Heaven where there is no dying. Heaven where our crowns are stored. Heaven where the discord, division, and divisiveness down here will not be found up there. Ever, all of that kind of stuff will be in the, in, in, outside the city limits. But I tell you, in that city where we're going, that new Jerusalem, there is no divisiveness. There is no discord. There is no division. I tell you, we're all going to be there together in Christ Jesus, our Lord, heaven. Though we'll never be perfect down here, we'll look forward to being perfect up there where everything is in person and never shut down. All will be worshiping him. All will be praising him day and night if there is such a thing. Whereas heaven ought to be the shared thing on our minds. The duties of this present Christian life are the matters we ought to be found doing. Yes, I ought to have heaven on my mind. You know what it's like. You work five days a week, and you look forward to Friday or whenever that payday is. When you get the payoff for the work that you have been doing, 
not just focusing in on the paycheck, but concentrating on your work that affords you the paycheck. I tell you, we need to focus on serving the Lord with all that is within us, knowing that there is a payday and it's found in heaven. The paymaster is God Almighty. Jesus has signed the check for us. He signed it with his pure blood. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to getting to heaven. And we need to agree to press forward toward the mark. Paul's perspective of heaven was proven by his pressing, his operating with haste in his personal ministry and life. Paul kept on serving. Paul kept on pressing. Paul kept on doing what Paul was called to do because he had had a revelation of heaven. He had an abundance of revelation from the Lord. He knew it was real. He knew that heaven is a real place for the real people of God, that one day he would get to heaven. And so Paul pressed. Paul's life was constantly being threatened. Paul was severely beaten and left for dead, but he pressed on. Paul was shipwrecked and clung to broken pieces three days and nights. But Paul pressed on. Paul made it to the shore only to suffer a snake bite that should have been fatal. But he shook it off and Paul pressed on. Paul was locked up alone with his brother Silas. Instead of giving up and giving in, they had a midnight jailhouse prayer meeting. They collectively pressed on. Shackles fell off there at midnight. Prison doors opened there at midnight. And souls were saved all because of their midnight. I tell you, you may feel as if you're in your midnight. But I encourage you to pray. <laughs> Call on the name of the Lord. Sing a hymn or two and see what, the, what God will do. Yes, keep heaven in your view. And he pressed on because he had a view of heaven. Your perspective on this future, on your future, impacts your decision in the present, in your present. I tell you, what you see is what you get. Paul decided to press on, to follow Jesus, the same Jesus that came down through 42 human generations, the same Jesus that was born of a virgin, the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judea, the same Jesus that was reared in a place called Nazareth, performed mighty miracles, and he pressed on. He was crucified on Calvary, and he pressed on. Yes, he died. He pressed on. They placed his body in Joseph's new tomb. He arose on that third day morning. And uh, yes, he pressed on. He ascended. He went away into heaven to prepare a place for us. That one of these old days, he'll be coming back. He's coming back to take us back where he is. So I encourage you today to just simply press on, hold on to the Lord's unchanging hand. Press on. There's a pattern of pressing on. We ought to all speak about getting to heaven one to the other. There's the goal of pressing on. Heaven is our goal. It is the finish line for all of us who are running this race. Running this race not that we might be saved, but running this race because we are saved. So I encourage you, church, press on. Praise the name of the Lord. If you want heaven to be your final destination, you need to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And you can do that today. 
you need to believe and understand that what is necessary to save your soul for you to have salvation, for heaven to be your home, has already been done. And it was done by the Lord Jesus Christ. He died that we might live. For there is no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. Not sinful blood, but sinless blood. The blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He gave his life that you might have life. Eternal life. Abundant life. Accept him today. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus that God has raised him from the dead. And you shall be saved. For it is with your heart, your innermost being, that you believe unto righteousness. And it's with your mouth that confession is made unto salvation. Believe him today. Believe that he is the only way. He himself said that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father but by him. The Father gives us eternal life. For he gave us his son as a remedy and rescue for our sin. Accept him today. This present life is not all there is. There's more. There's something called eternity. The question you must ask yourself is where will you spend it? In the smoking session, section or the non-smoking section? In heaven or in hell? They are realities. And there's a way out of that dilemma of going to hell and that's accepting the Lord Jesus Christ. I know there are many today that don't like speaking of hell, but hell is a reality. Hell is that thing that counters heaven. It's a negative, but heaven is a positive. God places before us life and death, blessings and curses, but he tells us to choose, and he suggests that we choose life, and that life is in his son, Jesus Christ. And you can have that life today. You can have eternal life today by simply accepting Christ as your personal Savior. It's not an intellectual assent. Yes, I agree. It's not something that is academic or historical. It's something that comes about by faith. And faith comes by hearing. And that hearing unto salvation is is of God. How can one hear lest there be a preacher and how can he preach unless he be sent? God sends preachers. He gifts preachers. He gives us, he gives us pastors after his own heart who will feed us with knowledge and understanding. Come to him today. Come and drink of the waters of life freely for it all it has already been paid. The price has been paid on Calvary. He died. He pressed on. He was buried. He pressed on. And the third day morning, he arose. All because he pressed on. He ascended. He went away promising to return and one day he shall accept him today as some have said it's better to have him and not need him than to need him and not have him you can have him today he bids you come he, he wants you to come come unto me he says 
all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Rest unto your very soul. And he'll be with you all the way. He never, ever disappoints. Praise the name of the Lord. Father, dear Lord, thank you for encouraging us. Thank you, Father, for comforting us. Thank you for giving us a renewed view of heaven, realizing that this earth and this present life is not all there is. But there's a better place and there is a better life. So we thank you for your word that we find to always be both lamp and light. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, your inspirational song.
does not lie promise that he would take care of us. So as we're running this race, pressing toward our home in heaven, trust and believe that the Lord is truly with you and you will make it home one of these one of these days hallelujah and as we will prepare to leave this place but never ever his presence we shall do so with this song love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with all of us henceforth now and forevermore. And all of the people of God said Amen.